All right, we're going to continue with the how to create a theme. Uh, this time we're going to add metadata information to both the platform and game views. Okay, we'll start with the uh, platform view. And as this is using a horizontal wheel, we'll put the information panel or potentially panels uh, either side of the video. Okay, so I'm going to start with creating a new group or a layer and we'll move it down just above the video. Doesn't really matter. I just wanted some kind of organization here. So I'm going to call this info. And I'm going to use a frame. And let's see, I'll use uh, a helper or an assist border style. Let's go with a normal rounded border. Yeah, that looks okay. It's too round though. I'll knock it down a bit. Okay. And then I want to make the border color the same as the red bars. So I'm going to use the dropper. Okay. And it does have a background color. It's black, I believe. I think it's black. Yeah, black, but it's set to 50% opacity. So you can see through it. All right, let's rename some of these elements here. So um, left info panel. And I want to organize the, the elements within this panel vertically. Okay, so for that, we're going to use a stack panel. And again, I'm going to rename this to left info stack. Uh, let's make it full fill the parent. All right. So within this, I want some text. And actually, this uh, stack panel, I want the contents uh, centered. Actually, I want the content centered. So um, let's see. Manufacturer label. And it's a constant. So manufacturer. And there it is. Oh. <clears throat> I also want to set the text to be auto sized, both uh, uh, width and height. And then set the alignment of the stack so its contents are centered. So now we're going to change the font size. Um, hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this. in place 
And I'm just going to simply remove the word label. I'm going to go down to metadata and choose manufacturer. There you go. So let's see. We want it to stick out a little bit. So as we've got data in yellow, we'll stick with the same theme. So I'm going to change the text color for the data or the metadata to be the same color. So again, use the, the dropper. Like that. I guess I could use the same font too while I'm at it. Arcade interlaced. Let's see what that looks like. Mm. Arcade interlace regular. Is that the same one? Yeah. It's big. Let's do 18. Arcade interlace regular. And I'm going to set wrap on. And I also want to create um, a border around the stack panel. Okay. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to think here. I don't know if I want this yet. Hold on. Because I'm not sure if I actually want this stack to take up the entire content at the moment. All right. So what I want to do then, I want to introduce yet another stack. I'm going to put it here and I'm going to call this manufacturer stack. And again, it's the same deal. I want this horizontally centered. Let's put these in here, put this in here. After that, and I want to make this auto sized. It won't look any different, but now I'm going to alter the border on this one. Or the margin on this, there you go. So it's kind of equal spacing. Okay. So um, all right. And then what I'm going to do is just copy this stack panel here. Actually, what I can do now, yeah, uh, now that I've got the elements inside one container, I'll put conditions on that container on the stack. And I can say collapse it if uh, manufacturer, where is it? Here. And again, uh, the yellow fields are the metadata fields. The white are the UI elements currently on the view. So we want to make sure we're picking up the, the metadata field here in yellow. If the value is no value, 
Okay. We want to collapse it. So we're collapsing the entire stack, including the label heading. Okay. If there is no manufacturer metadata field or metadata value. Okay. So that's cool. We want to collapse it. So now I can copy that stack and paste in place. So it will paste afterwards. Okay. And let's see what um, other metadata values we can put in here. Uh, let's see. Platform release date. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, let's give it a format. Um, mm, no. Yeah, this one. Okay, April 1982. And now it's just, so this is a uh, release date. So let me just make sure this refers to that. Release date label. Okay, and then same trick, visibility, instead of referencing manufacturer, we just change uh, release date, platform, uh, what's it? Why can't I find it? Strange. Or is it just a uh, release date? Let me just save that a second. Platform release date. Some odd reason it's not popping up. Well, my glasses aren't working. No, it's not showing it here. Okay. I need to... Um, I need to allow that to be selected, but never mind. I can base it on the UI element itself. Uh, should be in here. Release date. UI element. If it's text, is no value. Okay. I mean, it makes no difference. Um, so let's just keep on going. So I'm going to copy this, paste in place. And again, I'll go down to the, the metadata field or text field. And let's find another metadata field that we can leverage here. Mm -hmm. We have um, things like the CPU, the graphics, stuff like that. Um, I'm thinking, and this is why I, I don't think I actually wanted the, yeah, okay. So what we're gonna do, <clears throat> 
we're going to say total games and then in here total game count all right Auto saving. All right. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to the um, stack panel that I've currently got set to fill parent. <clears throat> I'm going to bring it up to about here. And then let's see. I want text scroller. Why do I want it? I don't actually want it. I do want it in here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to jimmy things around a little bit here. Okay, so um, let's just move it out of the panel for a second. Let's take a, um, let's take a grid. Let's put that into the... Um, whoops. Let's put that into the frame, make the grid fill this area. Now we're going to take the stack, put it in the grid. Okay. And I'm going to align to the top. That's better. All right. So I'm just going to call this left info grid. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Because a frame can only have one element in it, and I had the stack panel already. So I'm just going to switch this around. So we have this information panel up here. We have the text scroller here. Have it go down about there. And what do we want in there? We want the platform notes. And we want vertical scrolling and for consistency's sake, we want the same font, right? I want a different font size. There you go. And grab the color. Let's change the speed here. So the begin delay, um, we can have one. Scroll speed, it's going to be down here somewhere. Auto reverse when it completes or gets to the end of the its text. 
And so I'm going to do one more thing. I want a linear gradient. Hold on. That's not what I want. What do I want? What do I want? Let me take that. And add a rectangle. And paste this. I'm going to call this a uh, gradient resource and okay so I'm going to move uh, let's see I'm going to move that to 50 percent actually want the same color at either end but I want to change the opacity to something like that That's what we've got. <clears throat> and I'm going to use it as a resource. It's now red. It's disappeared from the view. And now we go to text scroller. <clears throat> we go down to opacity mask. I'm going to say it's a gradient. There you go. How's that? But pretty cool. Now the one thing the text scroller does too, it also has a background color. All right. So it's black. I'm just going to pick a transparent color. There. All right. Um, let's see. I could always, um, I'm going to call this notes. And the other thing I'm going to do is add a rectangle. Put it right above the notes. And if I have a look at the frame thickness, I've got it set to six. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to set the height. Well, let's see. I'm going to make the height three. It's going to be half that. And I want the same color as the frame. Again, for consistency. Now, let's see, the text scroller is there. You kind of want it, you want the divider to be there. And we want to alter the width. And then we can say 
there you go. And I'm just going to call this divider or separator. All right, something like that. Uh, now there's some other information, obviously, regarding a platform. I'm going to put it on the right hand side. Let me just alter this uh, rectangle. I think its height should be two. Something like that. And we're going to alter the uh, spacing. Actually, <clears throat> one thing I noticed about the gradient is that by applying it to the notes, the gradient only appears right at the bottom. I don't want that. So I need to introduce another grid. We'll drag this down to the bottom. We'll stick that right here. I'm going to copy the notes. Right click on the grid. Paste layout. So it appears in exactly the same location. And then I'm going to take the notes, put it inside the grid, set the notes to fill the size of the grid. And then I'm going to remove the gradient resource or the opacity mass from the notes itself. And I'm going to apply that to its container. And I think the results will look much better and as intended. There you go. So what actually was happening when I applied the gradient or opacity mass gradient um, to the text scroller, the top had the gradient, the bottom didn't until it hit the end of text. And that's not the effect I was looking for. I want to make sure that both the top and bottom of the text scroller area has the uh, gradient applied to it at all times. Okay. So, um, and I can alter the, uh, the gradient mask a little bit here. Let's see. Um, at like 90 and this would be at 10 let's see what that looks like yeah that's a little bit better that way at least you can read the the, the first line all right and let's uh, change the initial delay at least I'm just seeing how that looks. That's yeah, fine. All right, so now <clears throat> we want a panel on the right hand side, but before we do that, I just want to make sure this is, well, it looks like it's centered with the, the video already. Let's just double check if I move it up and down. Yep, it's centered with the video. Here's the smart guide. Um, I mean, just eyeballing it, the distance looks good between this side and this side. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy mm. I'm going to copy this panel, I'm going to paste in place uh, 
and then this is going to become our right hand side like that okay and obviously we don't need uh, I don't think we need a separator on the right hand side certainly don't need notes on the right hand side okay and we're going to change this to say right info panel right info grid right info stack and again we're going to look for um, other met metadata fields that we can put in here so we have things like CPU yeah all right so let's see we're going to change that to say CPU CPU label and then same as before metadata so we had CPU let's go with display okay We'll just change that to say display. And then display label. I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> CPU stack collapse when CPU yellow is the metadata field when CPU value is no value collapse it collapse the whole thing and this should be if there is no display information right so when display is no value collapse that stack and then this is uh, so we don't have total games on here again let's go to the metadata list so we've got CPU display and let's do graphics none for this one but still graphics whoops graphics label graphics stack and also the visibility conditioning so this would be um, graphics value is no value collapse it all right now let's pull up a different platform there you go And as you can see, Steam is not a platform. It's uh, so it doesn't have hardware specifications. So there is nothing to display. <clears throat> so the visibility conditioning took over. There you go. It's Windows again. Yeah. Ah. 
There you go. Now, the one thing I want to do is make this stack panel fill the parent. There you go. Unlike the one where I've partitioned it for notes at the bottom and then this information at the top, it's not going to be like that over here. Okay. So is there anything else? I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, you know, there's more information I could put in there, I'm sure. But for now, that's that's what I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, now, let's see. Would this look better if the title, if the label headings were in red? Let's see. I'm just curious. I can always undo it. Let's just do it on all three, just so I can have a look. Yeah, I'm just going to go with that for now. I don't really want to introduce yet another color. We're using reds and yellows and just do that. Now, the other thing is you notice that this sometimes contains no data at all. Okay, so for example, if I go to Arcade, which is a very kind of general use term for arcade machines. So there are no specific platform specifications listed. Well, why even bother displaying this information panel at all? Okay. If there is nothing to display. Okay. So what we'll do is we know that this panel consists of these three um, stacks, okay? So if all three are collapsed, then make this entire panel collapsed, all right? So visibility conditions, and we're going to say collapsed when, what was it, CPU stack? That was the stack panel that contained both the uh, label heading and the CPU metadata value. And if the visibility of that is collapsed and display, whoops, display stack visibility is collapsed and graphics stack visibility is collapsed then collapse the entire frame like that okay why bother showing it yeah And as you can see, as the uh, the other metadata uh, values were not present for this platform, it collapsed those entries. And the only one that you do have, which is kind of consistent, is that you've got a total game count for that platform. So that's the only thing being displayed. All right. So let's just take a look at it outside of the editor. It's not too bad. Now what we're missing is the same shadow effect that we applied to this border or the uh, container. 
Yeah. So I want the same shadow. So I've copied. Go over to left info panel. Paste effect. there it's just very very subtle all right and we'll do the same on the right hand side And remember, I copied this effect from the border. Okay. All I did was just from the video container that the border is inside. Um, I just simply grabbed the uh, the uh, the effect from the video container and then pasted it onto the um, the left and right frames okay so they cast a, a shadow in a similar manner all right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go with the um, the more complicated one here um, I'm going to want to copy, actually, what is this? This is, um, move that in there. It doesn't really matter where I pop it, but I want to copy it. So actually, Mm, yeah, I want to take the whole thing. I want to take the whole thing plus the gradient resource. So I'm not going to save it. And we're going to go to a game view. And I'm just going to right click anywhere and I'm going to say paste in place. All right. And let's see, metadata, that's it, game notes. Yep. Uh, yeah, I may do something a little different with this one. And as you can see, we've got visibility conditioning um, errors here because there isn't a manufacturer for the game view. But I'm going to hit save for now, and then I'm going to hop back to platform. And I want to grab the right info panel. And then go back to the game view. And again, I'm going to hit paste in place. All right. And I'm going to move the left info panel above the right info panel like that. So it reads in the same way. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to remove uh, yeah, I'm going to remove everything from the right info panel. Let's just 
get rid of the um, conditions on the right info panel. I'm going to move the, the grid and the notes from the left hand side into the right hand side. And I'm going to make the grid fill the frame parent. And as you can see, it still has, it still retains the um, gradient. It looks good over there. So I think we're done for the right hand side. And now we don't have, we don't need the separator on the left hand panel. I'm going to delete that. And it's just a question of, okay, so what metadata do I want to show for the game on the left? Okay. So I'm going to click on this one, manufacturer, scroll down and let's see. We can have a publisher, I believe. All right, there you go. So I'm going to change this now to publisher. and rename this one to Publisher, and rename this one to Publisher Stack. And now I can visit the visibility conditioning, and this is going to be collapsed if Publisher, in yellow, that's the metadata uh, field, Publisher value is no value. Okay. Now we go up to the label, and this is going to say publisher. All right. So now we'll go down to the next one. And uh, mm, actually, let me, I want to keep that date field a second. Uh, it's not total games because there is no such thing. So we've got publisher. We want uh, thought we had game developer. And so we're going to put in developer. Okay, developer, and then, so what we want on this one, so release date, we can do that. which leads me to believe that I have manufacturer listed twice on the platform view. I probably did. Yep. Uh, release dates. There you go. That's what happens when you copy paste. Okay. So we've got platform details and now we have game details. And because we have another platform view and another text view, 
that's going to prove a little uh, difficult because the, the layout and formatting is going to be very different from this. So on the horizontal wheel, we had the information on the left and right. For this one, we would have the information uh, above and below. Okay. I'm not going to do that in this video. But uh, there are some other things that I, I want to cover in the next one, uh, specifically on the um, game view itself. As you can see, I've got an awful lot of space here that I can leverage for um, uh, other information. So let's, let's focus on that. And just to double check, let's see what we have in our um, media folder for this theme. We have star rating. So that's one thing I wish to utilize for the, the game, the game view. And again, I'll explain that in a minute. And then what's this? Textures. Okay, perfect. So what I haven't added yet is, uh, let's see, I've got a list of ESRB ratings or images. So I'm going to plop that in here. And then what's this? Devices. I'm going to plop that in there as well. And then we have, uh, what's this? I've got a motherboard. I can't remember what I was going to use that for, but regardless. So let's see. So I've got additional graphics now that I can pull from. <clears throat> so the one I want to edit the game view. And I said that I've got all this additional space here. Okay. Let's uh, for now, let's just fill the parent. Uh, release date. And we're still going to have these little stack panels. So again, paste in place. It will paste right afterwards. So this would be um, ESRB stack. ESRB label. Let's just go down. ESRB. Now, instead of text, we're going to have an image. So I'm going to remove this. But while I'm at it, I'm going to change the visibility conditioning here and make it refer to ESRB. So if there is no value, don't show anything at all. OK. Because I copied and pasted it and it didn't like what I pasted. And that's fine. So instead, we're going to have an image. And it's going to be after the uh, the label. ESRB image. Now this is going to be a lot of fun. So we want metadata. The metadata uh, image is going to use a value of ESRB. And now we want to tell it what folder to use that contains images using the, the name of the ESRB rating. 
and that is the location okay so actually I could have done um, auto size on the width I mean, that's a bit much. <laughs> so what it's actually doing here, it's, it's taking the value of the... So I, I, I'll show you. So if I copy the, uh, the release date and paste it right after the label and I change the metadata value to say ESRB. Okay, so the value for the ESRB metadata value for this game is not rated. Okay, so what is actually going on is I'm telling this image to go to this image folder in ESRB with a value of not rated and it will locate an image called not rated and if it finds one it will display it and the same is true for all the other ones okay now if you want you can say, well, if there is no value at all, then I want a fallback. So I always want to show an image. I could just simply say not rated. Okay. Um, or if there is not one, and the way I've got it set up right now, if, if there isn't a value, then just simply not show the ESRB rating at all. And I think that's the way I'm going to keep it for now. All right. But you can have a fallback if you want. So I'm going to remove that text field, but that's how that works. So it's translating a value or it's using that value of the metadata field or metadata value to simply do a file name search to see if it can find an image with that value, if it finds when it displays it. That way you don't need to add multiple images and say, if ESRB equals this value, then this is the image to show, otherwise collapse it. You don't need to do that. You're essentially just setting one image up and say, this is the value, go and attempt to find a file name with that value in that given folder. All right, so that's our ESRB. Um, so again, I'm gonna copy this stack I'm going to paste in place. I'm going to call this uh, community rating stack. I don't really want to type all that back out. Community rating label. community rating and we have the, the image and this is going to be community rating image we just need to pick a different meta metadata value so it's uh, I think it was community was it community yeah community community rating and point it to the appropriate folder. In this case, it was star rating. And there we have it. Uh, 
All right. Let's set to center as well. There you go. All right. And and the same is true on this one. So the uh, community rating, it will be um, a value from zero through five. And, um, you know, it will be, let's, let's show you star rating. There you go. 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way up. Okay. So you can see it traversing all the way up to a five star review. Okay. And again, with the visibility conditioning, I'm going to say community rating value is no value. Don't even show this. All right, we're going to copy the whole thing, paste in place. This is user rating. Might as well change this while I'm at it. User rating value is no value. User user and then here we want user rating and still use the same folder star rating to do its translation or to do its lookup all right and again that's that's it So what I've covered here is metadata that can be shown as text or metadata translated um, to an image, as you can see here. It's very useful. It keeps the number of elements down um, on your view. And the less elements, the faster it will render. And as you can see, the number of visibility conditioning I've got going on that controls, you know, two, as you can see here, one visibility condition here will control uh, three elements. So instead of having that condition on three, I've just got it on one. Again, the less uh, conditioning or the less logic you've got going on, um, the faster it will render. So let's save that. And we'll just spin through a couple of games here. And the one thing I don't I don't like right now is um, but, excuse me is the ESRB image being so kind of right up against the label heading so we're gonna edit the the view and to be honest I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller anyway but more importantly, I don't want it button right up against the uh, the label. So what we're going to do is just add uh, a bit of a, a margin. That might be too much. I'm going to add four. There you go. It looks kind of consistent with uh, the other stuff.
There you go. Now, there's some other trickery, pokery that we can do here. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure if I can technically get away with this or not. But, hey, let's, let's, let's just see. So, so far, I've tried to keep the color scheme simple. Yellow for data. Um, red for, you know, static um information like the bars the frame example for example <clears throat> now where we went wrong was the images the images are white and dark gray and dark gray is okay but white as data probably not so let's try with the esrb what we can do here is um we can do it two ways. Let's try monochrome for this one. And again, we're going to use the uh, dropper to get this yellow. And I'm going to lower the opacity to 70. There you go. So now we've applied a monochrome color mask to the image. So now there's some consistency. That way you don't have to redo your images in your media folder, okay? And we're gonna do <clears throat> the same thing. I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste, effect, paste, effect there you go actually that doesn't look too bad at all so instead of a gray now we've got a very dark yellow for where there's no star rating so now we've got some consistency going on and we didn't have to redo our graphics we got the colors that we want and to let you know because i'm using a, an effect behind the scenes it's using a HLSL shader, so it's applying this monochrome uh, extremely quickly um, using uh, using uh, GPU. All right, so now we've got consistency here, and if I keep going down through the list, whoops. So that's so we're using a, a wrap on that. I don't like how that's wrapping. Yep. There you go. Yeah, that looks better. So there was no ESRB and therefore it's it's gone. But again, if you don't like that, <clears throat> if you don't like that where it's it's disappearing. You can just simply say, um, uh, ESRB, we can remove the uh, conditioning. And then with the image itself, we can say, well, if you don't have a value, um, use the ESRB folder and the file back at uh, the fallback will be, um, I don't know, rating pending. Like that. How about that? That way you always have one. You always have a value. All right. Yeah, there you go. Pretty cool, huh? So I think that will conclude um, the platform and game views for now. Uh, with the use of uh, metadata uh, values and uh, having them used for both text and uh, 
text and images are very, very useful. Um, some conditioning and a bit of uh, effects, uh, effects thrown in for um, monochrome. <clears throat> a monochrome effect to ensure that your images um, are consistent with uh, whatever else you've got going on with your with your view or theme. All right. So uh, with that, I'll uh, conclude the video, and the next one will go over um, some additional images that I, I have room for here and uh, some animations. All right, so stay tuned.